we have a pipeline that uh, demo the windows. So now let us create create some data. We are use some like a uh, simple data. That is just uh, the the time year of twenty twenty one. The full moon there is actually thirteen of them. The timestamp of each full moon. And we run this pipeline actually. Our data is a tuple at the first. The first element of the tuple is the timestamp, and the second is the name of this full moon event. And uh, we have astronomer event transform that uh, first created this data and then used the timestamp value, convert this tuple into a timestamp value. This is basically how the timestamp is labeled uh, associated with each data. With this transform, if we print these values, we will see we only see the value part of the data. We do not see the timestamp. It's not because they are gone, it's because this becomes a metadata or timestamp for each element. If we just print the element, we, we don't see the timestamp but it's still associated with the element itself and the, the windowing will react on these timestamps. We'll show it later. So we first uh, demo the global window. So uh, all pipeline use global window as default. This is the single window that covers entire option. In many cases, in, especially in batch pipeline, this is what we want since we want to analyze the data that we have. This is a pipeline we have, and this will print the global window. This print window info will print the window and the timestamp and the element. Now all the data is in the global window. And uh, if you checked out the collab, I can also paste it here. There is a demonstration for the global window. And you will see the, all the elements belong to the same global window. This is just a visual demonstration of this uh, printer window info. Then the fixed uh, time windows. If we want to analyze our data like hourly, daily, monthly, we might want to create an event given it spaced, spaced win intervals. That's when we use fixed time window. So this pipeline then first we are window the incoming elements into fixed windows, which the fixed size and of three months per window, that is a quarter. And uh, you will show the window of each element. Here is the January 3rd to April 3rd belong to the same window. And uh, also some element belong to second window, third window and the fourth window. It shows the first has one element. Oh, so this is um, some new moon and the full moon e astronomy events. Uh, not all the full moons, sorry. But uh, anyways, we uh, the this also demonstrate the window size and the element. We can see the element are divided, are uh, distributed into the fixed uh, windows and each window has the same window size. And uh, then we check the case of session of the, of the sliding windows. Mm, let me also paste the district. The sliding window, maybe we want to fix that window. We don't want to wait until window finish so we can start a new one. Then this is a use case we use sliding window. 
it's very similar in implement, implementation. It's very similar to fixed window. You also have a window in two. And uh, you know, don't use fixed window, just uh, use side window. The node has two parameters instead of one window size and a window period. Then we print the, this window, it's, it looks much longer because now each element can belong to multiple windows. For example, this March Equinox, it uh, belongs to three windows and uh, starting from January, February, and uh, March. And each last uh, a quarter. And uh, for the demo visual demonstration, also had it in the collab, I pasted it here. And you will see the element and the window. The window is a sliding window and each element, it belongs to multiple windows here. The first one belongs to three window and the second one belongs to actually also three. Nope. And finally, the session windows. Mm. I paste the description here. Maybe we don't want to regulate regular window, but instead we have the window reflect the period of where activity happened. Session allows us to create those kind of windows. We know how to specify a gap size in seconds, which is the maximum number of seconds of inactivity to close a session window. So similarly, I have the code below and I execute it. So no, the window in two have sessions and the session only has one parameter that is gap set when the same element we will see how it goes um i also paste the demonstration here and essentially the windows the elements are grouped into these sessions and each session can have single element if within the period of gap size, it does not see another one, then this window just ends. And then here the we have this element and we still see in up, upcoming elements that has 10 stamps smaller than the gap size, then these elements are in the same windows. And this is how the session window works. So this is a basic demonstration. And uh, now we go to another one. That is a real use case. This streaming taxi rider, which is a very good example to demonstrate the windows. So again, I use this Dataflow notebook. And uh, if you are not within a GCP environment, you are first need some Google Cloud, uh, C CLI, some command line tool, and to interact with the public PubSub resource. So we first import something, set up the pipelines. And uh, this IB is interactive runner. So being Python SDK provides an interactive runner that makes it convenient to use the, in a notebook environment. And we create a pipeline that run with the interactive runner and read the data from PubSub. This is just we define the pipeline and get a P collection. We haven't run the pipeline yet. And if we use this interactive runner, we can show the data uh, in real time. We'll see here. It, to use it very simple, just uh, use interactive runner show and it will, you will see the entries are increasing because this is a streaming source and the incoming streaming data never ends. And basically this is what the data looks like. It's a row and uh, has some a schema like this, a rider ID and uh, some point the latitude, the longitude, and uh, importantly there is a timestamp associated with each element, and there is a meter reading for this rider ride. 
and this is some real real time data. And uh, what we do first is group this data into a window using a sliding window of I think it's ten second duration and uh, one second uh, interval between each slide. And uh, we'll see how it goes. We can. Okay. This, we, we can show the live data after we put them into windows. And uh, now it prints a window. First, uh, we will see the pen is still pen zero because we have not yet filed it. We do not uh, use a group back here or something. So it, uh, it's not filed yet, all the pen is it's pen zero yet. And uh, we can see the it divided into some windows. It's not uh, obvious here, but it's more obvious here. And uh, each color is one window and uh, it's in some slided uh, manner. And uh, some graph. If you are interested, uh, you can go this into more detail. And uh, we ju I just uh, do an overview. And then um, we do some processing. That is, we first extract the one field called a meter increment from our data. And then summed all, summed all element by window. Use this combined globally sum. That way we sum the element within the same window. And now we show the result. And it now propagates as we run the pipeline because it's a streaming pipeline. Alternatively, or in production, we always write it to something instead of just show it in the notebook. And then we can also use write to pops up. Yeah, this is a basic use case of the streaming pipeline with window. Yeah, thanks. That's the end of the demo.